Intermittent fasting is still reducing calories. You're just reducing calories in a very clear and defined, very black and white fashion. Okay, during a period in which you're not eating, you're very clearly not eating, but during a period that you're eating, you're very clearly eating. So if you were to look at your calories over the course of a seven day period, you're still in a deficit, more than likely. So are you going to plummet your metabolism into the ground the same way that you would if you were just restricting calories normally? Because there's quite a bit of evidence that shows if you restrict calories like by 25%, well, it only takes about three months before, well, your metabolism is crashing eight to 10%. And that's pretty significant. That was published in the International Journal of Obesity. That's a pretty well-known statistic that if you reduce your calories, your metabolism drops. Well, what about with fasting? Well, it's kind of interesting because with fasting, you have these periodic, very short and acute stressors. Now, when you have short periods or very defined periods of fasting, your body doesn't necessarily see it the same way. It doesn't see it as, oh, he's just reducing calories or, oh, she's just like drawing this out for a long period of time. It sees it as, uh oh, there's a shock to the body. In fact, there's evidence that it can actually jack up your metabolism for a short amount of time. But it doesn't stop there because you can really damage your metabolism if you fast too much. Let me explain. By the way, after this video, I want you to check out Super Fat. If you are into all kinds of different nut butters, these guys are awesome. My personal favorite is their Nitro Coffee Nut Butter. So it's a macadamia nut butter that also has Nitro Coffee in it, and it comes in these delicious little pouches. They are so, so good. And then they have a probiotic, an MCT one. They have all kinds of different nut butters that have unique twists to them, but they also have really delicious brownie mix and really delicious pancake mix. So Super Fat is just epic. They've got some really awesome stuff, and there's a link down below that you can save some serious cashola if you use that one. That way you don't have to go to their site normally. You can use that link down below, support this channel, support them, and keep us creating awesome content and save some money while you get some delicious nut butters. So that link is down below in the description for after this video. So your resting metabolic rate is very, very important to pay attention to. There's a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that found that when someone did a four day fast, their resting metabolic rate increased on day one, day two, and day three. Their metabolism got faster. How is that possible? You weren't consuming food. Isn't consuming food like 20 or 25% of just our calories burned in a day anyway? Well, what this tells us is that when fasting is the anomaly, it skyrockets our metabolism. So much so that it supersedes the thermic effect that we are not getting. Okay, we're not getting the thermic effect from food. So it takes us a lot to actually increase our metabolism, but it's doing so because of adrenaline, norepinephrine, and the stress response. So what does this tell us? It tells us that we need to be fasting periodically and aggressively when we do. That's the problem that I have with sort of, I don't know, mimicking fasts or sort of like doing like, still having bulletproof coffee during a fast because then for all intents and purposes, your body is just going into caloric restriction versus clear defined fasting. When we are fasting, we need to allow our body to be in shock and get the stress response. It is the stress response that allows us to continue to burn fat, but also the stress response that allows us to preserve some of the muscle and preserve some of the overall things that we want to save, right? So if you look at caloric restriction, well, yeah, you're just restricting calories. Your body's gonna think you're starving. It's gonna think like, oh, this is just the new norm. He's just giving me little bits of food all the time. But if you're fasting right, then it's a periodic stressor. But what happens if you start fasting every day or I don't know, even six days a week, right? Well, then your body's just going to assume that that is caloric restriction as well. Because for all intents and purposes, over the course of seven days, it's still looking at it as like, oh, we're reducing calories. We're still reducing calories. So does this mean you should not fast every single day? Candidly, I don't think you should fast every single day. If you wanna fast every single day, you have to be accepting of the fact that that is going to be your norm and that your metabolism will slow down to adjust to that. But I think that if you wanna to continue to get body compositions out of fasting, you need to be able to shock the body now and then. Let me paint a picture as well. A lot of times if people are doing any kind of like caloric restriction or they're doing intermittent fasting daily, what's happening is they have just enough carbohydrates coming in to spike their insulin levels just enough that they're not burning fat anymore. You see, here's how it looks. 
Normally, we have this thing called lipolysis that occurs. And what happens is the stress response, like the catecholamines, like adrenaline, norepinephrine, they hit our fat cells and trigger the fat cells to basically release into the bloodstream. But there's a problem. If insulin is present, like when you consume carbohydrates, it blocks that from happening. It's called the insulin to glucagon ratio, okay? And if that insulin level is too high, then we cannot use that fat very well. We cannot access it. So if you're in a caloric deficit because you were fasting today, and then you had a little bit of carbohydrates, well, what's happening is that insulin is blocking fat burning from continuing on. It's not really a big deal if it's happening once in a while because all the benefit of your fasting is gonna be a bigger deal than that potential issue. And what I mean by that is like, if you're intermittent fasting like every other day, yeah, it's fine. But if you're fasting every day, then eventually you're slowing down how much your body can utilize that fat as a fuel source. The other thing that we really wanna be careful of is if you have a long enough fast to where your body can produce ketones, you can preserve muscle because your body is going to actually have the muscle preserving effect of ketones. But if you're doing these short term fasts every day, you're not ever getting to the point where you're getting the leucine sparing or the beneficial muscle preserving effect of ketones. You're just sitting kind of right in this gray area and you're doing it every day. So 16-8 is essentially caloric restriction. What I would typically recommend is longer fasts, 18, 20, 22 hours, two or three days a week. If you look at your calories over the course of that seven day revolving period, you're gonna be at the same amount of calories, but you're doing it in a different way that isn't teaching your body that you're just in a caloric deficit. It's teaching your body that, oh, his normal calories are here, but occasionally there's a random shock that shouldn't be there, but it's just there. Your job is to continue to allow your body to continue to think that that is just a shock and not the norm. I know the intermittent fasting lifestyle is great. You feel clear because you're not eating. All of that matters. And if that is what you're after is just the lifestyle, by all means, please, please, please keep doing it. Do what makes you feel good and, and perform better. But if you're just after body composition or if that's the first thing on your mind, you really should switch it up. Use that periodically until you get to your goal weight. Once you're at your goal weight, then adopt a lifestyle that you really like. Trust me when I say an intermittent fasting plateau is one of the most frustrating things that you can deal with because you feel like, what else could I possibly freaking change? I'm already not eating for 18 hours. I'm already, what else could I change? There's no fairy dust I can sprinkle on my fast to accelerate. It's so frustrating. So if you run yourself into that barrier, it's a world of hurt. So mark my words, if you fast so that it's the anomaly, you will have better success. Then you can adopt a strategy. You will slow down your metabolism. That's the point. Your body's doing what it's supposed to do. So listen to it and give it a little bit. Give it an inch so it doesn't take a mile. I don't know. I'll see you tomorrow.